This podcast is a part of the Gunna Geek Network. The opinions expressed may not reflect those of other podcasts or affiliates of this show or Gunna Geek. Check out other geeky podcasts at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. Get ready, because the geekiness commences in 3, 2, 1. You have been granted clearance level 10. Stand by for shield debriefing. All information to be discussed here is classified and may only be discussed among agents of equal or higher security clearance. And now it's time for your scheduled debriefing. I'm Agent Stargate Pioneer. I'm Agent Haley. And I'm Agent Lauren. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. One shot number six, we're going to be talking about Iron Man 2. Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a fan-based podcast on the television show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the General Marvel Universe, because Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. came from the General Marvel Universe. And just a reminder, you can catch all the ways to contact us and our backlog of shows at legendsofshield.com. We also have a voicemail line, 844-THE-BUS-1 or 844-843-2871. What a fantastic week. How about you guys? Yeah, it's been pretty good here. Exciting stuff happening. Yeah, and <laughs> we got a lot to talk about, so I'm just going to roll right into it. Five-hour so- podcast of solid news. It's going to be <laughs> awesome. Stay with We're us, just, folks. Oh, So much stuff. We'll get to the good stuff as soon as we can. But first, I discovered that I did one heck of a bonehead thing. And last Christmas, when I already had an Iron Man 2 combo DVD Blu-ray kit, I bought another one on sale. So it's still wrapped. It's still ready to go. Brand new. The digital download hasn't been used or anything. So here's what we're going to do. If we get a total of 30 likes on our Facebook page at Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., you can find how to get to it at our website at legendsofshield.com. If we get a total of 30 likes and you have commented on the Facebook page, we'll draw names out of the hat. Uh, Haley has already agreed to do this. And whoever wins, we will send you the Iron Man 2 DVD Blu-ray combo. And if Haley disagrees, I do have a very nice top hat that we can use. For the drawing? Yes, for the drawing. That'd be awesome. I can post pictures. I think we'll need pictures of that. If you've got the fancy hat, maybe you better do the drawing. Because I have a really sad, like, construction hat. Ah. I, okay. You get to pick. Do you... Okay. <laughs> In addition to this, put on the Facebook page, do you want it drawn out of the construction hat or the top hat? There you go. That's There that's, you go. That's, that, yeah. that's the thing that you post. Top hat or construction hat. Lauren's and or like Haley's. And like the page. And like the page. Yeah. Gotta like the page. If we don't get 30 likes, we're not going to get the Iron Man 2 Blu-ray. And it doesn't matter which hat the name gets drawn out of, because it won't. <laughs> there you go. So, Lauren, in addition to suggesting your hat for this giveaway, you also have finally come through on your promise. And you have some fanfic news for us. Yes. So, I, a couple of podcasts ago, was mentioning how I wondered how the glimpse of Agents for S.H.I.E.L.D. fanfiction that... I'd taken before the big twist of Ward's real alliance was revealed on the show. I wondered how that had changed since then. I have actually gone and done a little digging in there, and it doesn't look like it's changed a whole lot, in all honesty. I took a look. The most popular pairings are still Sky and Ward. That's, you know, still up there. Followed by SP, you're okay. Clint Barton and Phil Coulson, which is a holdover from the movies, from their appearance together in Thor. All right. Yeah. And then Fitzsimmons. Wait a minute. Clint Barton and Phil Coulson romantically? Yes. Uh, Yes. 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 They are a very popular pairing. Okay. Welcome uh, to fan fiction. Yeah. I I was most aware of them from actual Avengers, but apparently it's carried over here, which considering all the crossover, I mean, shouldn't really surprise me. There's hmm. also quite a lot of, like I said, Fitzsimmons, a lot of Simmons Sky, actually a lot more Colson May than I expected, which I'm kind of proud of. A lot of Fitz Ward. Yes, uh, a, a bit, but there's more Colson Sky than I see Fitz Ward. 
That mm, seems so, inappropriate. Which, I yeah, and honestly, I expected to see a lot more Fitz Ward than I did. Hmm. I'm still stuck on the Clint Barton, Phil Coulson. I, I think Phil Coulson would be on top. <laughs> it depends on the author, and it depends on a lot of things. There's also on the first page right now that I'm looking at Bucky Barnes and Gemma Simmons. <laughs> interesting. Fanfic, fanfic can be very interesting. Fanfic can be fun. Fanfic can be horrible. There's a, it's called Sturgeon's Law, and it applies to pretty much everything, but people tend to use it a lot in terms of stories, not necessarily even fanfic, but it's something like 10% of everything is crap, 80% of everything is mediocre, and 10% of everything is so awesome it's worth dying for. And that tends to hold pretty much true for just about everything, fanfic included. Hmm. We've heard, you've heard the cast, or some of the cast anyway, at the Houston Comic Palooza actually talk about some of this stuff. And we'll be getting to that a little bit next week. Yes. Yes. So stay tuned, people. There's some of that going on from the cast themselves. They seem to have a lot of fun talking about that sort of thing. They really do. It's very, very entertaining. Mm hmm. So if we've got a, just a ton of news, and the first thing that I ran into was the rumor that Marvel is canceling the Fantastic Four comic series to snub Fox. Now, it's just a rumor. There wasn't any concrete anything about this. And some of the rebuttals were like, well, why would they cancel because of the movie? Well, let me back up a second. The rumor is that they were going to cancel it so that Fox wouldn't have any material for their Fantastic Four movies, which is kind of stupid because Fantastic Four really began the current Marvel Universe back in, Haley, what was it, 62, 1962? 1961. 1961. So there's a lot of Fantastic Four out there. So the other thing is that if they did that to snub Fox, it would be stupid because they actually sell more comics once the movie comes out, which we kind of talked about last week with my irritation over the Guardians of the Galaxy thing. But there is no out-and-out -out denial. There are a couple of execs saying it would be stupid, but there's no denial. I, You know, this could be Disney's first foray into some hardball and to try to get the entire universe under one roof. I don't think it's going to work, if that were the plan. Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen that way. Uh, like, the Nerdist article says... Marvel cancels and renumbers comics all the time. They might end the current run, which has already been a renumbering as of Marvel Now a couple years ago, and they might retitle it or just restart the numbering again. But I don't think it's going to end. I mean, there's any time they're like, oh, they're ending this comic, it's Especially one, like when I remember when they were like, oh, they're ending Uncanny X-Men. And everyone was freaking out because that comic has been running with the same numbering since, oh, what, like the, the it, was, it was on issue like 500 something when it, uh, the renumbering hit. And they just restarted it as Uncanny X-Men number one. This sort of stuff happens all the time. They do it from time to time because the high numbers can intimidate possible new readers whereas you know number one oh i can just jump right in here yeah especially with the whole right now the marvel now thing the whole point of it is accessibility for new readers i wouldn't be surprised if it was something like that i just was surprised not to see an out and out denial by anybody from marvel or disney see that doesn't surprise me because it doesn't matter if you say yes we're doing this or no we're doing this People are going to interpret it so many ways that really the best thing you can do is not say anything until after it happens. Because no matter what happens, if there's something unexpected that happens between now and then, people are going to jump all over you for it. People are going to be writing all these articles about it. From a business standpoint, it does make more sense. It, maybe not a fandom standpoint, but from a business standpoint, it does make sense to just stay quiet. Okay. And talking about people being quiet or not quiet, Lauren, you actually know somebody that has a voice. Uh, yes, we finally know who is voicing. Well, first of all, we finally know that, yes, Thanos is. And Thanos, for those of you who don't remember, was that big purple guy that was seen at the end of the Avengers. We do finally know that he is going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy, which most of us suspected. 
and we finally know who's voicing him. He will be voiced by Josh Brolin. Anybody who's seen W or... Men in Black 3. Yeah, Men in Black 3. He was uh, Young Agent K. Uh, he was in... What was no it? Country that one? Old Men. Yeah, no Country for Old Men. True Grit, the True Grit remake. And he's about to be the role that Clive Owen played in Sin City, but in Sin City 2. Because the character had like surgery, facial surgery in between the two. It's an, and this is a prequel. But he will be voicing Thanos. And he does have this kind of interesting gravelly voice that he's capable of. So I think that's pretty interesting. I think I just said interesting too many times. But I, I don't think that's a, such a bad decision on their part. Even if when I first heard that Vin Diesel was going to be added to the movies, I was like, oh my god, he's going to be voicing Thanos. <laughs> Interessant. Talking about voices again, we even have more voice fun facts, right? Yes, we do. Remember a couple weeks ago when we were talking about those really funny noisemakers that were like the, the old timey noisemakers, like the enemy is on the way or whatever it was saying? Yeah. That voice was actually Jed Whedon, Joss Whedon's brother, co writer for the show, uh, co producer, all that stuff. Co creator. Co-creator, basically, and also worked on Spartacus. I will never stop bringing that show up. <laughs> As is right and proper. As is right and proper. Really need to get on watching that. Yes, you do. You really, really do. One of us. One of us. <laughs> <laughs> you know what else I'd like to see? I would like to see, and I mentioned this before, I would like to see Phil Coulson in Agent Carter. And, and we talked about it. We talked about how it was highly unlikely because of the, the time periods involved and how old everybody was at every po each point in time. But the one thing that Phil Coulson, Clark Gregg himself, brought up on a red carpet event is that he would actually like a time travel episode so he could participate in Agent Carter. And I say, why not? We need more Phil Coulson. Yes, there are many mechanisms for time travel in the Marvel Universe. There so are. I mean, I know this show is supposed to be more grounded in reality, but come on, if we could have the, I don't remember what it's called. It's basically like unobtainium that Quinn loves so much. The Gravitonium. Gravitonium. That's the name. If we can have that stuff, we can have time travel. Come on, people. Yeah, it's fine. We have space travel. Time travel is just one more dimension. Exactly. It's not that hard. And you know what else is not that hard or shouldn't be that hard? <laughs> Directing oh. Ant-Man. <laughs> we're going to spend the next hour reading off rumored Ant-Man directors. So I think we're in. going to have time travel before we have an Ant-Man director. <laughs> so Adam McKay was in talks to direct Ant-Man. He pulled out. Uh, Adam McKay is the uh, Anchorman guy, right? Yes. And then Rawson Marshall Thurber. I didn't make that name up. Was, <laughs> he directed Dodgeball. Uh, he was in talks to be the Ant-Man director. He is pulled out. And this is supposedly for real the Ant-Man director, Peyton Reed, who has directed Yes Man and Bring It On. So since last we talked to you guys a week ago, we have had and lost two directors. And now for real, we have a third director for Ant-Man. Ant-Man may in fact be a cheerocracy now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a cheerocracy. It's a cheer tatorship. He okay. Took the okay, original Bring It On in 2000. Oh, my hero. That one was so good. It was. It was a great and then there were I, the other ones. One. Yeah. <laughs> and I've seen them all because I've got two young girls in the house and they've seen them all. So <laughs> thus I've seen them all. You know, the worst is that when I'm in the van and they're actually watching a DVD and the batteries run out in their ear, you know, the IR earphones, wireless earphones, whatever. And they go, can we please listen to this on the speakers? <sighs> okay. Are kids still watching High School Musical? Is that still a thing? Uh, I haven't watched it recently, but that doesn't mean that they don't watch it. Okay, I'm, I don't know I'm what very the kids out of are touch these days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? They're they're watching the Divergent series and the Hunger Games series. They're very into that. Okay, that works. I, I can get behind kids liking dystopian novels and <laughs> movies. Mm -hmm. The more kids that watch dystopian stuff, like, the better I feel. I don't know. I think that says something. I like the Harry Potter series, but the Twilight series, I still can't. I mean, Vampire Baseball is cool. After that, I just, I didn't get it. Like, why? 
sparkly vampires. I read the first book and it was all I could do. <laughs> I, just, I, couldn't I couldn't finish. I couldn't finish the first one because Edward reminded me of an ex-boyfriend and I bad bad things. But I did get to go see the second movie in the theaters. My aunt, who loves the series, was like, "You want to come see it with me? You like vampires, right?" And I'm like, "Well, <laughs> if I'm not paying for it, I will go see the Twilight fan in the wild." And I happened to be sitting next to this like. 15 year old boy who was there on a date he just kept every time the girls would like scream because this is the one where the werewolves are all running around shirtless for the first time <laughs> and all the girls would scream and he's just sinking down lower and lower in his seat and the, the worse he feels the more i'm enjoying myself because <laughs> i just feed off of the misery of others <laughs> so all in all it was a decent night all, all right so let's recap edgar wright is out. Yes. Ad, Adam McKay was supposed to be in, but pulled out. <laughs> Ross and Marshall, Raising. yeah, <laughs> Ross and Marshall Thurber was supposed to be in, but is like out. No. I know it sounds like you're getting like a letter wrong in every single part of the name. <laughs> <laughs> and Peyton Reed is supposed to be for real, but we don't have any signed contracts at this point in time. Yeah. All right. So just to recap, we're talking about four different directors, and we don't know if any of them will actually direct the film, or actually, at least we'll know that two you of know, them won't. I kind of hate saying this, but it is fitting that this would be how things would go for the Ant-Man movie, because, I mean, come on, it's Hank Pym, I, well, Scott Lang probably looking like for this one, but I mean, it's just like, nobody likes Ant-Man. <laughs> Ant-Man's the worst. Ant-Man's the worst. <laughs> He's even worse as Giant-Man, but yeah, oh, yeah. Ant-Man's the worst. There's, there's this, uh, in Mighty Avengers, there's this one panel where he's talking to Reed Richards, and Reed Richards is like, come on, we all know that I know more about pin particles than you do. <laughs> <laughs> when is principal photography supposed to start for this thing? Does anybody know? Like a month ago, probably. Yeah, yeah I think so. Go figure. Uh. Well, I mean... I'll make one more announcement. Scott Derrickson is supposed to direct Doctor Strange. Woohoo! Woo! Yay, Scott. Somebody got a director. <laughs> it's not that, <up>, man. <laughs> more people like Doctor Strange than like Hank Pym, I'm pretty sure. Well, because he's different than a lot of the other characters. Is I love that he is... Okay. <laughs> I was watching... Um... I want to say it was the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon when he showed up and somebody had put a gif of it online and somebody's like, is that Dr. Orpheus? <laughs> yeah. Because seriously, Dr. Orpheus and Stephen Strange are basically the same character. I mean, yeah. obviously Orpheus was based on him, but... From the realm of tomorrow or no, whatever he No, seriously, says. seriously. It's, he does stuff like that all the time. <laughs> he, does, it does look... I mean, he's even got the coat. It might not be the same colors, yeah. but it's, yeah, it's, the, the Sorcerer Supreme cape looks like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's just and he's always making these like really grandiose proclamations as part of his spells. Like all and, he's missing is the surly teenage daughter and the cat. <laughs> uh, and sometimes the spells rhyme. Sometimes they don't. Depends on who's the writer, but. Oh, it's fantastic. So I'm I'm getting confused as to what's coming. Does anybody know what's coming up in the Marvel Universe? Because we're talking about Doctor Strange. We're talking about Ant-Man. We've got Avengers 2, Guardian of the Galaxy. Well, what's coming up when? Does anybody know? Okay. We've got the schedule here in front of me. Guardians of the Galaxy is coming out August 1st of this year. Woohoo! Avengers 2, May 1st, 2015. Woohoo! We know they're already shooting that. They're halfway done shooting it. Yeah. Ant-Man is supposed to come out July 17th, 2015, Ooh. and they don't have a director yet. <laughs> that's pretty, so, that's pretty that's cutting bad. it close. Good luck with that. Yeah. Captain America 3 is May 6th, 2016, and there is an untitled Marvel movie that's supposed to come out July 8th, 2016, and my guess is that that's going to be where Doctor Strange fits mm, in. Too I bad. I think that's a good guess. That could have been a Panther movie. I would not count Panther out. I think yeah, I think I think they plan probably plan on getting Panther in before the next Avengers movie, or maybe in the next Avengers movie. I know they were talking about. I can't remember where I heard it, but they were talking about it recently. They've been talking about it for years. Yeah, it's one of those people keep asking, "Are you going to do it?" And they keep saying, "Yeah, we plan to do it," but they're not giving any details about it. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we did get some details ab- about some Blu-ray DVD releases, and not all of it's great, uh, but at least we're getting them. The Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Blu-ray DVD set is supposed to be released on no- uh, November, on <laughs> September 9th. And the only lament I have on this, it is really close to when the next season will probably premiere. So that won't give a lot of people time to bone up on it before the next season, like we had hoped for. And I haven't seen it announced streaming anywhere at this point in time either. So they're probably still trying to get that Hulu Plus money. They're probably still trying to get money from wherever, like iTunes or wherever else it it is out at. So we podcast some of the season's beginning episodes before the next season starts we'll have to figure out how we're gonna watch them but okay great we get it it's set for september 9th and also set for that same day captain america the winter soldier is supposed to be out on digital 3d and hd and then on demand on september 9th so the dvds are actually supposed to be out on august 9th with the on demand on september 9th but the one thing that it won't have, and I'm this this is proof to me that maybe Marvel stretched too thin, is that there is no short, there's no one shot that's going to be released, and it'll be the first one since uh, I believe Iron Man two that hasn't had one. Yeah, uh, yeah, the article that I read talking about that said, well, we only meant to do these when we had a, a good idea for them. We're not going to just like press one out every time, and this time nobody had a good idea. Well, you've got the Netflix series, you've got two t- television series with Agent Carter and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. You've got all these movies going on, of which some of them don't even have directors, and then they're in the process of being made. They're just, it seems like they don't have a good handle on what's going on. Well, they, they've got good ideas, they've got good stories, and they're shooting and releasing as many as they can, but they... <sighs> This is one of the things that people liked Marvel for is you got the DVD and it had a little story on it that you were like, oh, cool, there's Coulson again or whatever. And they just, they don't have that I've got an idea for the short. Yeah? Gosh, they should have called. You have like Coulson's team trying to contain the giant Jotunheim dog thing. (laughs) That would have been awesome. Yeah, from Thor 2 is what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been awesome because it's been a dangling participle ever since. I wouldn't have minded that. But I guess, you know, that you'd have to have everybody free from the filming schedule. Or somebody trying to deal with the giant dog thing. Doesn't necessarily have to be Coulson's team. You could have done it in conjunction with the show being shot. Or I've got another idea for a short. You show some guys spraying Sitwell off the highway. (laughs) (laughs) I got an idea for a short. We just follow Bucky around. There's like classical music playing and he's not wearing a shirt. (laughs) We just do that for like five minutes. Yeah. You you want a Bucky moment like Hugh Jackman in X-Men Days of Future Past? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I was asking Haley about this earlier, but I didn't ask you. Uh, So I'm going to put you on the spot. Which did you prefer better? The Hugh Jackman shot from X-Men Days of Future Past or the Thor shot from Thor 2? Hmm. Up when he's uh, on the balcony in, yeah. in Asgard? Uh, see, I kind of prefer Chris Hemsworth. But he's but... kind of in shadow in Thor 2. Like, you don't yeah. get a really good look at him. I don't believe that's really what his waist was. I think that was a little bit CGI. But No, if you see, like, pictures of the guy on, like, gossip sites and stuff, no, that is what he looks like. It's amazing. Hmm. I would say I like... Hugh Jackman better than the Thor 2 shot, but the Thor 1 shot better than Hugh Jackman. Okay, okay. Wh- which is, I mean, we're going to watch it a couple weeks, but where's the Thor 1 shot you're talking about? Uh, Where he's uh, like he's, walking he's around carrying the t He's crazy homeless guy. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. I'm, I'm all for Agent 13. We all know this. Or Sif. That too, so. Uh, yes, Agent 13. Do you need a minute? I, I think I do. That's okay. I'm remembering Thor's shirtless scene. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Do we have anything about season two that we could talk about? Yes, we do. Okay. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is going lo-fi in season two, according to Clark Gregg. He seems to be the mouthpiece right now. Yeah, well, he's going around doing a lot of promotion for his movie, Trust Me. And so people are, you know, taking the opportunity to ask him stuff about S.H.I.E.L.D., this interview that I'm reading is on the Nerdist, but the quote is from when he was speaking to Collider about Trust Me, and they took the opportunity to ask him. 
And he said, it's going to be lo-fi. You're going back to basics. You've got to rebuild S.H.I.E.L.D. from the ground up in a much more dangerous world where your group is outlawed. So it feels like the early Sean Connery, James Bond with the brass knuckles and not afraid to knock somebody off, which is what I was hoping for. Yeah. And and I think it's just going to be the same thing as Agent Carter, too. Yes, which uh, is is pretty great, uh, which is also part of the interview. In addition to story tidbits, Greg also hinted how the next season might play out from a schedule standpoint. I thought there were so many things stacked against us last year, and one of them was the ABC television schedule uh, would put us on for three episodes and then take us down for four weeks. Nobody could get a momentum going, and when the show started to be on consistently and having a story that carried over in an episodic way, that's when things started to click. So the great thing about the announcement was, A, we're moving to 9 p.m. where it could be a little darker, like I think Marvel needs to be. Then they're going to show, I believe it's 10 Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episodes, 8 of Agent Carter, then 12 more Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episodes. For the most part, this is a straight run of our show, which I think really works. And I think, yeah, like we talked about, we've been talking about uh, that sort of juxtaposition, I think will work really well. And I have to agree, the fact that it would be on and then off and then on again, I might have done something to drop the viewer numbers in terms of just killing the momentum. You know what I was thinking? I read that same story. You know what I was thinking when I was reading it? Hmm. Somebody at Disney or abc or both finally went huh we're killing our own stuff this isn't good we need to change it well especially at the beginning of the season but i feel like they were trying to time so many different things together like they were trying to time things to when the dvds were being released and trying to time them to line up with when the movies were in theaters and having crossover events and things yeah i think that was a big part of it trying to get it to line up to cap two and trying to do like reruns and trying to do well, and like the, it started when the Iron Man DVD, Iron Man 3 DVD came out. And then the first episode kind of has, you know, the extremist stuff in it. Yeah. So it's just the whole series was like trying to hit too many targets. And we were talking about this before, especially around Captain America. It failed around Captain America. And I say it failed because they should have had stuff leading up right up to it. And instead, we had two weeks off, one of which was the Marvel. Uh, assembling a universe which isn't bad but that should have literally been a couple of days before the movie came out not a week and a couple of days before the movie came out so i feel like they were trying way too hard and they missed the boat a couple of times and when they didn't it it wasn't that big of a hit anyway i also feel like maybe one of the post credit scenes should have been tying into what's going to happen next in agents of shield yeah or like you said with the dog in thor 2 that would have been something in that could have been in winter soldier and they're talking about that they've got two things going on at the different times with filming schedules going on at different times if you're talking a shawarma or you're talking a one shot or something like that you don't have to be tied to the movie schedule at all matter of fact the movie that we watched tonight iron man 2 its post credit scene was directly from the filming of thor and they weren't doing it in conjunction they just literally took the dailies and then threw it into iron man 2 or even the shawarma scene was shot like a few weeks before the movie premiered you mean in avengers in avengers yeah, yeah they the they avengers shot it Shormers. like they shot it i think after the like press premiere Right. It was, yeah, between the press premiere and the real premiere, they shot that scene. It's hard not to like what these guys have done in totality. I mean, we're just nitpicking here, really. But it, some of the stuff is, is pretty cool. And one of the things that I've been talking about in the last couple of weeks is I want to learn more about Guardians of the Galaxy because I don't know anything about it. And I'm like, oh, I get this great opportunity. I've got a couple of months to find out what's going on. Well, I discovered that Marvel has been putting out histories and and here's what happens with this character and so on and so forth. And one of the people that they were looking into was the Star-Lord himself. And they gave out some issues that you should go read if you want to get into the history of the character. So I think that's pretty cool that they're just not leaving people off and into nowhere. And it's not just Guardians of the Galaxy either. they got Panther, uh, Black Panther. You've got other histories going on that they are trying to indoctrinate you new people like myself that are like hey where do i start i don't have any friends that know anything about this you know help me out here so uh, good on you i thank you and we'll see where it goes you start at the beginning 1961 it's not that hard (laughs) yeah that's next for me 
at, right after I get up on Guardians of the Galaxy. There's also the Marvel encyclopedias, which are pretty good. I have not delved into those too much. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I just didn't want to be spoiled. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you'll definitely be spoiled if you start there. But if you're looking to just figure out who the characters are, they're great for that. So, uh, one last thing before we move on to Iron Man is that, again, we took a look at the movies and the box office takes of X-Men and Spider-Man. I think Spider-Man's pretty much run its course. It only it got barely uh, under $4 million this past week, and it, it ended up with uh, $691 million worldwide, uh, which means it made money. And then I asked our consultant, where does all the movie go money go that's overseas? And he actually knew. And he said, actually, Sony converts it all to yen. So all the money ah. that Sony makes is kept over in uh, Japan. Cool. Yep. And then X-Men Days of Future Past, it was not the number one of the week, but it did pull in just over $32 million for a total domestically of $162 million. It did take $200 million to make, but again, Fox pulled in $560 million worldwide. Our consultant did not tell me where Fox statches money, but I would assume that it is kept somewhere else offshore because of the weak dollar right now. So... That's going to be it. I mean, we'll see a little bit more of X-Men, but I think it's probably on the down downward spiral. And I guess the next big, what is the next big comic book movie? It's not Guardians of the Galaxy. There's something else coming out, isn't there? Um, Let me check. I want to say, I want to say it's something around the 4th of July or, or whatever. But it, anyway. Let me check the coming soon. I know there's more summer blockbusters coming out, yeah, but I can't think of any more comic book movies. Yeah, because we've got Fox, Sony, Marvel, and the DC Universe. Their b next big movie is Batman and Superman, or Justice League Light, whatever you want to call it. Or Trainwreck. Um. Could be, could be. Or they could get it right, too. I hope they get it right, because those characters really deserve it. Yeah, there's, there's no... Okay, the only other actual comic book movie this summer is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was based oh. on a comic book. Oh, and Sin City. Oh, there you go. Okay. But uh, those are both after Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, as we record this, Edge of Tomorrow, is that what it's called? Tom Cruise movie? Yeah, that one's out this... I'm probably going to go see it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to go see it tomorrow. Unfortunately, I had some home repair issues come up, so I probably won't get it out to the theater this weekend. But it does look like it's good. Well, if you do go, would you come back and tell us how you liked it next week? I will. All right. So in the meantime... We have nine Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, and we watched the third one this week. And, you know, that got me thinking, you know, where where would you rank Iron Man 2? Because I was pleasantly surprised. I forgot how good it was for me personally. And maybe it's just because I, I like, the you know, the tech and, and that sort of thing. But uh, so I asked a, a couple of people, or I, I put it out there on our Twitter and our Facebook, and got a couple of hits. And, and Jay from Gallifrey Public Radio said... It's above the Hulk and the first Captain movie, but it's low. And he said, although, Black Widow, I'll be in my bunk. <laughs> and our consultant wing, he said, last, it's the worst. I would disagree on that, but... It's second to last. It's not quite the worst. Uh, really? I would have to write out my ranking. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I did that. Uh, now, originally, I in our one-shot number three, or podcast number 19... I said, here was my list. Uh, number one, Avengers. Number two, Iron Man. Number three, Winter Soldier. Four, Thor. Five, Hulk. Six, Iron Man. Two, seven is Captain America. Eight is Iron Man. Three, and nine, Thor. I've revised those rankings, and I probably will continue to revise them as we go through these movies. But as of the watching the third movie and also seeing Winter Soldier here pretty closely, this is what my new rankings are. And yes, SP is always wrong, so whatever. But... My number one is Avengers. My number two is Iron Man. My number three is Winter Soldier. So those haven't changed. But my fourth, I have put Iron Man 2 as number four above Thor. I think it's better than Thor. Number five or is Thor. Uh, Thor 2, that is, not Thor. Number six is the Hulk. Uh, seven, Captain America, the first Avenger. 
8, Iron Man 3, and 9, the original Thor. And those bottom three I'll probably be revising significantly by the time this is all over, but I think I'm pretty good on the first three. We'll see if Iron Man 2 keeps up in the fourth slot. And I know you two girls would probably disagree with that, and I'm fine with that, but if you want to if you want to say why you disagree, that'd be fine. Okay, I have written out my list. Number one, Avengers. Number two, Cat 2. Number three, Thor 2. Number four, Iron Man. Number five, Captain America. Number six, Which Captain America? Thor. Uh, the first one. Okay. Number six is Thor. Number seven, Iron Man 2. Number eight, Iron Man 3. And number nine, Hulk. All right. So basically, you and I have transposed where Hulk and Thor is. and. I just, I guess Thor just rubbed me the wrong way. I, Thor 2, I was able to get in the universe a little bit better, but because I didn't have any background in it, the, the original Thor movie, it just, it didn't sit well with me. See, I love Thor. I especially love uh, J. Michael Straczynski's run. Yeah. And this had a lot of elements of that, especially because I think JMS wrote at least a draft of the script. I don't know if he wrote the final draft. I'd have to double check. Okay. And where did you put Iron Man 2? Iron Man 2 was 7. 7. But it's not because I disliked it, it's just because I liked the other one so much more. It's like the whole having to choose which of your kids is the favorite. All right. So you were Winter Soldier number one, right? Winter Soldier is number two. Uh, I I had to think about it and probably Cap 2 and Avengers will will switch place on how I feel that day. Mm -hmm. But right now I'm putting Avengers as my favorite just because... Uh, it's it's just such a happy feel good movie, and it's very quotable. Yeah, yeah. Cap two, Cap two, I think is the better movie overall in terms of just as a movie. Okay. But I, I really like seeing the whole team work together. And your three was what again? Thor two. Thor Dark two. Dark World. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, it was a good movie. I can't wait to watch it again right now. Just after watching Iron Man two, it was a lot better movie than I thought it was you know, just thinking about it in the past. So that's why I put it above Thor 2, but I could see Thor 2 being better than that. So that was your third. What was your fourth? Fourth was Iron Man. And again, not because I dislike it, just because I like the other one so much better because I felt like mm-hmm. they were, you know, they're really getting the formula now. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll see how that transposes over the time. Haley, did you have your list? Uh, yes, but the middle part is always in flux. Like, I know what yep. my top three are, I know what my bottom two are, and the middle ones I always can't figure out. Mm-hmm. But right now, Avengers is number one, okay. Cap 2 is number two, okay. Iron Man number three, Okay. Captain America is number four, Okay. Thor 2 number five, Thor number six, Iron Man 3, seven, Iron Man 2, eight, and Incredible Hulk at the end. Okay. So you really like Cap and you put Cap basically is yeah. it's to your first four and Haley likes Thor and Thor was better represented or Lauren was yeah well I just the first Captain America movie is so much different than all the superhero movies you've seen up to that point uh-huh. yeah, that I couldn't help movie. but love it yeah well I liked the first and wing actually sat me down and he said look dude the first two acts were great the third act sucked and I was like yeah, yeah you know that's true I can see that yeah if they hadn't known that the Avengers movie was coming up I think the end would have been very different. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I could see that. And I did like the the first two acts of it, but when it got to the third, I kind of phased out. I'm like, really? This is going on? Uh, I'm wondering what I'll think about it now after seeing Captain in three movies. I- I'm wondering how I'm going to like it again when we get to it. So, Well, anyway, that's our, our rankings. Uh, if you guys out there you're listening to this and you have a list and have a reason why or a reason why SP is wrong because everybody does, go ahead <laughs> and get a hold of us at voicemail line, uh, Facebook. Remember to like us on Facebook. Yes. And remember promise, that just because is an acceptable reason. This is true. For- and I promise not to jump down your throat and scream at you about how wrong you are because I swear I don't do that as much anymore. Anymore. <laughs> so- anymore. So go ahead, Facebook, Twitter, email. Uh, you can get us at our personal Twitter. Just go to the legendsofshield.com website. That'll take you to the Gunna Geek website. That is our page in the top right-hand corner is all the different ways you can get a hold of us, including our voicemail line, which is what, Lauren? Our voicemail line is 844-843-2871. 
or 844-THE-BUS-1. The bus one. There you go. All right. So now we're on to what we have in our notes of Iron Man 2. And I'm just going to start out because I, like the other two movies, watch this with a S.H.I.E.L.D. slant. Okay. We have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We're an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. podcast. What of S.H.I.E.L.D. was in this movie? And actually, it was a lot. Matter of fact, I would say, I know it was in the first Iron Man, but I would say this is really the beginning of what we have now in the modern uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. or Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We have Coulson being reintroduced. We have Black Widow being introduced, which is an Avenger. Nick Fury is a little bit more integrated. We have Howard Stark, who is not only introduced, but an integral part of the movie from the grave. And there is definitely a lot of S.H.I.E.L.D. going on in this movie. I I was pleasantly surprised. Even There's even a deleted scene where Coulson is at the hearing at the beginning with Senator uh, Stern, who, Hail Hydra, I was watching <laughs> for any Hydra tips that were going on back then. I was like, oh, did they know back then? Did they? Yeah. Did they? Well, I was, I was, I just happened to be poking around on Tumblr as I often am. And somebody showed a gif of that part where, you know, Stern's cussing him out. And everyone's like, hey, you remember the time Tony Stark kept the Iron Man suit out of Hydra's hands? Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, no. that gives the movie a totally different slant now. It does. It does. And also in this movie, I thought, well, we get to see the the Ten Rings a little bit again. Uh, it, it's not front and center. So I had to go between the commentary and the, uh, gosh, what was it? It was the yeah, Shield Yeah, I wasn't vault. the only nerd who watched the, with the commentary this time. Oh, I not only watched the commentary, but I watched the Shield Vault as well. And when Vanko is in the back alley getting his tickets to go to Monaco, that operative that gives him that information is from the Ten Rings. Yeah, that was in the novelization, but it didn't make it to the theatrical cut. So I'm wondering if we're going to see the Ten Rings pop up in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. at any point in time. Given the uh, Hail to the King short, we are definitely going to see the Ten Rings again in the future. It just uh, remains to be seen where. Mm -hmm. And then we also get our timeline because at the very end of Iron Man 2 when we're at quote unquote what Favreau calls shield headquarters we actually see the Culver University incident that we had already seen in the Incredible Hulk so the instances in the Incredible Hulk take place after right after Iron Man 2 and we know that Thor takes place pretty much concurrently because of the uh you know, Mjolnir being found. Actually, there yeah, is a comic. Yeah, yeah. There is a comic that addresses this. It's called Nick Fury's Big Week. And it establishes that, if I remember correctly, Cap being found, Iron Man 2, Thor, and the Hulk all take place within a week. Yeah, I'd heard that before, <laughs> but. And then the actual events of the Avengers take place a year later. Mm hmm. We also get our first instances of what a clearance level is. And Howard Stark says, welcome to clearance 616. <laughs> That's not in the real movie, is it? No, I don't think so. No, because I don't remember that. Okay, yeah, that is in a deleted scene. It's also in the S.H.I.E.L.D. vault where when, I think it's when Tony is watching him on the screen, it's part of the, the, the movie that comes up. So, yeah, okay. It Once was, again, 616 showing up again in a Marvel movie. Yep. And S.H.I.E.L.D. 616 is the C-17 variant that... The, it's, it's, it's also the, the prime Marvel universe. <clears throat> yes. Mm -hmm. And we get to see another C-17 on the ramp in Edward, so maybe that is S.H.I.E.L.D. 616, or the bus, or whatever you want to call it. And by the way, Haley, how's the bus coming? It's not looking good, guys. <sighs> <laughs> Did you at least... <laughs> Were you able to sweep up the broken glass everywhere? Most of it, but do you have any idea how hard it is to pick up all that glass? Like, somebody's going to have to come through there with a mop. Actually, I saw a tip on Lifehacker or somewhere. Apparently, if you get uh, some bread, and if you've broken glass, you just kind of use the bread to mush it up all the glass. And you'll have to throw the bread out. I mean, I would not recommend eating bread <laughs> with broken glass in it, give, unless give you're it in the Ward. circus or something. Yeah, give it to Ward. <laughs> Make Ward eat the bread glass. <laughs> I was wondering if you had enough black spray paint to spray paint the top of the, the wings with that shield logo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I if you listen to Voices of Defiance, if you haven't, no no big deal. But I do another podcast with uh, Sean and Shannon, his wife Shannon, about the Defiance television show. And if you have listened to that, you have heard me geek out about the radio gear at the top of the arch of Defiance, and that I want to find those stupid microphones and podcasts with them. Probably sound terrible. But I want them. And I haven't been able to find them. I have no idea what they even are. I think it could just be props. Who knows? There's definitely two different ones, possibly a third one. Anyway, so I'm like, huh, I'm watching this and we see Christy Everhart from Vanity Fair interviewing Hammer and Tony Stark at Monaco, right? Well, she uses a little stupid digital recorder. And I'm like, huh, I wonder what that is. Well, I found out. Don't worry, everybody. I found out. You can take a, a seat now. You, don't worry. I got you covered. It is a Sony 1D-B100 digital voice recorder from like the 2004-2005 time frame. So it's not a very good one. Only has <laughs> only has eight hours of storage. Uh, a whole eight hours? Yeah, 16 gigabyte or megabytes in there. So it's it's nothing like we have today, but... Remember when storage was in megabytes, guys? Oh, my God. Yeah. I still remember the first uh, USB stick I ever got. My dad gives me, it has, it has, uh, what was it? It's like 50 megabytes on it or something like that. And he's like, this thing cost $50, but I got a discount for it. I'm like, oh, I will treasure it always. And I look at <laughs> now I have like a two gig, you know, USB thing. I'm like, wow. Okay. I have more storage than was in the Apollo program in my watch. In your phone. I mean, yeah, yeah it's just, you got to love the whole march of technology. Christy Everhart, she's a big reporter. She's got this like slim digital voice recorder and everything. I'm, and we've already seen Tony Stark at the Senator Senate hearing with the glass phone, right? And so I'm wondering what kind of technology is out there. Christy pulls out this flip, this slim flip phone, and that's what she uses as a phone. I'm like, oh, okay, smartphones aren't out there yet. Maybe she's broke. Well, probably. I mean, she did sleep with Tony. Except Tony has a pretty awesome phone. He does. But later on, when he's watching his father's film, he's got like an old style. I don't even know what it is. Palm 3 like, or something. Yeah, it's like a... I tried to look that up, but I couldn't find it. Sorry. Couldn't make any correlation to what You it know, was. I bet S.H.I.E.L.D. took his good phone and he had that one like in a shoebox in the <laughs> oh, back of his closet. That's probably that what happened. That makes a lot of sense. That's great. They're like, quickly, don't let him look at porn on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, fine, I've got ASCII porn on my phone. <laughs> ASCII porn. <laughs> uh, I loved his, uh, his uh, Monday Night Football rock star entrance, but I got to ask you girls. Okay, he's got a flying suit. Why does he need to jump out of a plane? Because it looks cool. <laughs> it looks cool. I guess that's it. He could have flown right in there. Save power. Yeah. Yeah, because he's dying from using the suit. Yeah, just hit your ride, save power, look yeah. cool. All right, all right. I do like the, the parallel between him and Howard Stark in Captain America at the Stark Expo with the dancing girls and... You know, it's just it's just a matter of degrees and of what's acceptable now versus what was acceptable then. If I remember correctly, Howard's tech didn't exactly work all that great, though. Again, limits of technology. Mm -hmm. Lim limits of the technology of the era. Well, let me see the flying car that you've built recently. How well is it working? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Hey, Whiplash. Uh, hey, my car can fly. It just can't land. <laughs> <laughs> Whiplash is pretty cool. He goes into his own little cave. He wants his bird. <laughs> my bird. Board. Board. bird. I can't do the accent. I want my board. <laughs> <laughs> there were some, after this movie came out, there were some great comics about him and that damn bird. <laughs> like them flying away like, next time, Stark, next time. That was all him too, uh, the actor. Uh, yeah. He wanted the bird in and Favreau's like, no. And he's like, we're going to have the bird in the movie. And Favreau finally said, fine. And there is a couple of scenes that Rourke put in there that Favreau was pissed at at first, but he's like, okay, this is cool. First of all, there was the scene uh, at the beginning where the bird's actually drinking vodka. <laughs> yeah. Rourke he's wanted like, to make sure that they did. Can the bird drink vodka? He's like, what? He's like, the bird's going to drink vodka. <laughs> 
And if in case you're wondering what was in that cup, it was vodka. The bird yeah. was drinking vodka. And the other scene that he put in is when he's escaping from the prison and he's walking out and the explosion goes off. He actually brushes off his his uh, shoulder like from from whatever, from either the fight or the explosion or whatever. And Favreau was pissed because he can't cut it out. He's walking away from this explosion. The explosion is happening behind him. Uh, they can't recreate it. I, I suppose they could in CGI, but it would take too long. So they had to keep that in. And then uh, Favreau, when he's doing the commentary, said, yeah, okay, it's growing on me. Yeah, it, it actually looks kind of cool. So y'all have seen The Expendables, right? Which one? I have The first one. Yes. Okay, I'm convinced that Rourke just kind of walked in between sets because he looks exactly the freaking same <laughs> in that one as he does in this one. Like the hair and everything. Probably. The only the only real difference between him in that movie and him in this movie is the accent and the lack of bird. <laughs> <laughs> bird. My bird. 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 I want my bird. Now, there was a scene where the guards actually killed the bird, but they took it out because yes. it, it was unnecessary. And sad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would be the shoot the dog moment. It would be. And then I also, anybody here watch the newsroom? Yes. Yes. Okay, Olivia Munn on the newsroom. Uh, she was at the very beginning. She was actually brought back because her part was cut out of the party at the Stark Mansion later. She was brought back in to introduce the Stark Expo. And so she's playing a reporter on Iron Man 2, and then she plays a reporter in newsroom. So, Yeah, so when she was cast, do y'all do y'all remember anything about like the lead-up to this movie? No. No. Okay, I, I remember all of it because it's, I, I was just, and I still am just voracious about news and trying to figure out what's going to happen. It's, it's like Star Wars all over again for me. But anyway, when Olivia Munn was announced and they were like, oh, she's going to play a part in the movie. All of a sudden, I was like, oh, she's going to be the wasp. She's going to be Janet Van Dyne. This is going to be so great. And then when the movie comes out, everyone was like, wait, what? That was, where was she? And then, yeah, once you watch the movie and you listen to the commentary, she had a much, well, not really much bigger, but well, a much different part where she was supposed to sleep with Tony and she was supposed to have kind of a more comedic role. And uh, she was up in the bedroom while the place is getting destroyed. And they ended up cutting it out because it kind of messed with the whole very tense tone of that scene. And also, he was Stark already had a thing going on, not only with Pepper, but with Black Widow. And to add another girl into that, it just didn't fit the storyline that they were going to. Too complex for a two-hour movie. Uh, another cameo that I thought was great was Elon Musk of SpaceX or Tesla, which is very appropriate at this point in time because SpaceX just announced their new Dragon human-carrying capsule. So, yay, Elon! Thank you very much. And also, some of the movie was filmed at SpaceX. They were actually building rockets there while the movie was going on. Yeah. They can't shut the place down. They, you know, too much money is invested, like billions of dollars to try to get these rockets off. So um, what you're seeing is actually an active uh, space vehicle assembly line in the background. So that was pretty cool. When we were at the midnight show, my husband, who's in that same industry, was watching. And we were like, he's like, is that Elon Musk? And then later on, he's like, is that SpaceX? And the answer to both of those is yes. Mm -hmm. So, And the story is Elon Musk was introduced via uh, Robert Downey Jr. because he did some uh, work. He, he wanted to, he was basically. He's doing research, wasn't he? Yeah, for he was doing. Iron Man? Uh, right. On his character, on Tony Stark. And he was trying to be like Elon Musk. Elon Musk, to him, was the persona of what Tony Stark should be. So. Uh, John Favreau got in touch with Elon Musk through Robert Downey Jr. And he said, hey, look, uh, I've heard you've got a great place that we could go uh, film at. Uh, can we go do it? And Elon said, yeah, you can not only can you do it, but you can do it for free. If I could be in the movie. If I could be in the movie. Yeah. So he was. <laughs> yes. And I love that apparently now they have a statue of Iron Man at their place. <laughs> they do. It's great. That's that's pretty awesome. Uh huh. Nice. Also, uh, more cameos. Uh, Kate Mara was the, the woman who serves Tony his court papers there at the beginning. Yes. When I first saw it, I was like, wait a minute, that's, that's Kate Mara. That's Kate, she's the news to the storm. 
Mm-hmm. And of course, she's also in House of Cards in the first season of American Horror Story. And of course, I had no idea who she was back when the movie came out. But now, yeah, I recognize her. And also, every time I see her and every time I forget and then I remember, the actress who plays Christine Everhart, and this is... Y'all, okay, Haley, I don't know about you. Were you the type of teenage girl who back in about 1998 watched the show Popular on the WB? I was not a teenager in 1998. Okay. Okay. Well, Haley, don't answer this, but were you born in 1988? Yeah, 98. Well, she was, she was on that show. She was one of the two main characters. And I always forget that's her. And then I'll see her and I'm like, wow, she looks really familiar. And then I'll look her up. I'll be like, oh, that was her. And then I will immediately forget. So this is for the record recorded online. Me reminding myself, Leslie Bibb was on popular. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're, if, if you need a voice recorder, a, a podcast is a great, <laughs> great place to do it. Yeah, Let reminder to myself from the past. <laughs> Can ask Sean all about that. <laughs> oh, also, if y- anybody ever argues with you that Seth Green was or was not in a Marvel movie, he, he was. was. Played in a cameo at the beginning. Yes. Uh, along with the Stan Lee playing as Larry King. I love when he plays other people. <laughs> I know. It's so great. <laughs> I thought that was Larry King. <laughs> <laughs> uh uh, one more thing I have to say is Black Widow. I mentioned yes. her a couple of if times. If you weren't going to bring her up, I was. Cause <sighs> I remember originally Emily Blunt was going to be playing Black Widow. So glad but she didn't. She, yeah, she, if I remember right, was pregnant and had to uh, drop the role. And so they brought in Scarlett Johansson. I think that was one of the best decisions they've ever made. No offense against Emily Blunt because I love her too. But Scarlett Johansson has been just consistently amazing as Natasha Romanoff. See, I was going to say I wasn't crazy about her characterization in this movie. Mm. Yeah, in this one it was just like, I don't know. She's As they've done more with her, she's gotten to be a lot better. But in this one, first of all, like her fighting, I want to do that. I want to strangle somebody with like your my ankles. Eyelids. Yeah, my ankles and my <laughs> eyelids and just that whole fight scene in the hallway. Yeah, that at the, the end. The first that's time awesome. I saw that I was just like, ah. Mm-hmm. But no, it's just she she looks great. She's just awesome. Just I wanna be I wanna be Scarlett Johansson. Now, I can't say that every single shot in that was her. It could have been her double, but I no, can't. No, a lot of it was her double. I, I I can tell you that she actually did all that. She did her own wire work and she did that whole scene. Just yeah. not all of it is her that made it into the final movie. Yeah, there's there's a lot of gifts on Tumblr of her <laughs> doing various practice stuff and just wow. Yeah, John Favreau mentioned in the commentary that the pose she does that with the one leg all the way out at the end of the <laughs> hall there, it, he said that they worked on that for hours. Doing that pose is tough. Okay. I've tried to do that. Like, okay, I, I draw not particularly well. And every now and then I'll have to try to take a photo reference of uh, a pose or something like that. And this is one that I've tried to do just, just like, okay, take a picture of me real quick in like the half second that I can hold this pose. And it's like your legs hurt and you're never as awesome looking as you think you are. And it, it just, it never quite works out. So her to actually do that pose and look good doing it and hold it for more than about half a second, all my respect. Mm-hmm. Now, I had heard that she had actually fought to get this role after Emily Blunt couldn't. Either you two any know any more about that? I don't, but that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it would not surprise me either. I, I does sound familiar. I just can't remember it off the top of my head of what the story there is. Well, good for her and good for us because so yes. far, Haley, you know, in retrospect, I can see exactly what you're talking about. I'm glad that we have Black Widow, uh, Scarlett Johansson for the rest of the movies. But in this movie, I was watching it. And I was like, really? You're just going to kowtow to Pepper like that? And and she seemed like she didn't know what she was doing from time to time. But at the end, she knew exactly what she was going to do. And she was the Black Widow at the end. Well, it was a cover. I don't know if it all was a cover. Because like, when Tony was going after War Machine in the mansion, 
she just left and she just walked out and she didn't look back. It, she didn't try to help those people or anything. And well, yeah, that's not her job. I well, well yeah, no, but, but before that, her job was to keep an eye on Tony and make sure he didn't do anything too terribly stupid. But right before the party, she tells him if you know if it were her, she would do whatever she wanted. Yes. Like, what was the point? That I don't know. I did like the fact that she was such good friends with Pepper at the end. Yes. So that was pretty good. And happy too. Because at the at the end she puts in uh I forget if this was in the shield vault. It was in the shield vault. Where if you look at Happy's record in the shield vault on the Blu-ray, it will tell you that she put in a special note that he has Happy has exhibited special aptitude. And I don't know if that was you know, like John Favreau as director or his character Happy, but it was nice to see that in there. So, did you have a favorite part of the movie, Haley? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, did you have a favorite part of the movie? Black Widow kicking ass. That whole scene was just, like, amazing. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that yes. scene at the end where she's just, just taking out everybody. To town. No, yeah. You know, my favorite part is right after that when Happy says, I got him. And then and he, he turns around. <laughs> I think that's my favorite shot in the entire movie. That was a great shot. That one guy there that's like dangling from the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, I did like, uh, out of all that, that was all great. Out of all that scene, if you take it to the next step, I like it when Natasha hacks in to the computers and shuts down Rhodey's suit. And then he, she tells Tony, I got your friend back or you've got your friend back. That was pretty cool. Haley, have you thought of a favorite scene? It was at that fight. Yeah, not the, well, the fight was awesome too, but right after the fight, mm -hmm. when you just see the devastation she left in her wake. Mm -hmm. I like Tony up in the donut. That part was great too. I remember that from all the, like, the first leaked pictures from the movie was him and the, it looked like one of those, you know, when you see football players when they're in there, like padding, but they take off the, the jersey. Mm hmm. It was like that, but it was like the, the top half of the Iron Man outfit, and then it was like green screen pants. <laughs> and he's just there hanging out in the donut. Mm -hmm. And I think that was like some of the first leaked pictures from the set was the pictures of that. And then Sam Jackson on the set it was from, I don't know, probably TMZ. Yeah, there was a couple of things from that whole uh, series of, of filming events. First of all, John Favreau actually tweeted a picture of Scarlett Johansson in the Black Widow suit and he was like, oh, it's so cool to see Black Widow on the set. He got in trouble from Marvel for doing yeah, it. Yeah, I remember but, that. But uh, he did that and also the interior of Randy's Donuts does not look like that. That was another location in the area that they used uh, when they were inside afterwards. So, And yeah. this is also where we get to see Nick Fury popping up again. So yeah, we had a com com convolution of events for this particular scene i really liked it and i really liked tony i mean this he he was dying this was going to be his last day so he took his suit he went to go get donuts and he was enjoying the view and it was great when they pumped him full of the what was it lithium dia whatever they pumped him full of science they pumped him full yeah. of science yeah, there you go and magnets to give him yeah, a little so the whole okay yeah the whole scene <laughs> after that the whole scene after that where he's trying he's like oh i need to make a new element the whole time i'm just watching like oh my god it does not work that way science does not work that way you don't <laughs> you don't know how much science does not work that way it was physically painful to me how much <laughs> science does not work that way but it did lead for a really cool scene that in retrospect is a lot funnier. That whole scene where Coulson's in there and he's like, do you know what this is? With the Captain America <laughs> yeah, shield. Right. I remember I know, everyone in the theater. He's such a fanboy. Yes. And everyone in the theater started like screaming because they're like, oh my God, Cap. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I know what this is. Put it right there. And then it just props the thing up to make it level. And in retrospect, what with we know with Coulson now being an established Captain America fanboy, that seems like 20 times more hilarious than it was at the time. And it was already pretty funny then. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. He was basically setting the character way, way back then. In it's Iron Man it's like using the Shroud of Turin to like clean up a Kool-Aid spill in your kitchen. I do that all the time. I don't know about <laughs> you. Works great. 
shroud of Kool-Aid, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crash, yeah! Crash, bang, boom, bop. <laughs> Go watch some YouTube Kool-Aid commercials, kids. You'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, so this was... I, I really enjoyed the movie. Very funny. I, I didn't get the whole whiplash thing the first time around, and that's probably why I didn't like like it that much but this time around i got a better appreciation for it uh so i don't know i i like it we'll see if it holds up when i watch thor 2 again so is there anything you ladies have to say about this again there were a lot of really great little character moments i i think iron man 1 was the better movie but I don't think this one is nearly as bad as a lot of people were making it out to be for the past few years. I definitely enjoyed it, watching it again. Again, this is, sorry, I was just going to say again, this is another one that it's on FX a lot. And every time I see it's on, I'm like, oh, hey, put it on there. I have seen this on FX. Good call. And they were just showing Incredible Hulk on FX earlier today. <laughs> oh, did you watch it? No. Okay. Haley, did you have anything uh, left to say uh, about Iron Man 2? Well, when they're doing the mo the demonstration of all the hammer suits, they look a <laughs> lot like mobile suits from Gundam series. Yeah, some of them. Some of them look like Robotech suits. See, they remind me of, I think it's the Tau battle armor from Warhammer 40k. What, it's just like the shape of the heads on a lot of them. Yeah, there's a couple like that. Yeah. They were very conscious not to make the dummies look like the Star Wars robots. Yeah, that's one of the things from the commentary. Yeah. And it, in retrospect, I could see that. But at the same time, I mean, it's a robot. Come on. I mean, there's only so many ways we're going to make a robot in this day and age. So They should have just had like an army of big dogs <laughs> just running along, <laughs> creeping me out. Yeah, we're, we're not at uh, Bicentennial Man yet. All right. Remember... That we're doing an Iron Man 2 Blu-ray DVD combo giveaway and downloadable content. Do like us on Facebook and put your comment there and say which hat you would want. The construction hat or the, what is it, a fedora? It's top a top hat. hat. Top hat. A top hat or construction hat. And if we get 30 likes or more, we'll go ahead and give it away. Otherwise, it'll wait for another time. So next week, we'll be talking about Lauren's experience at Comic Palooza and her, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. panel. We'll have some snippets from the panel for you so you can hear of all the great things, including all the pairings that they were talking about. So don't, <laughs> don't miss that. And go ahead, go to our website, legendsofshield.com. You'll find all the great ways to contact us, the Twitters, the Facebooks, the emails, including our voicemail line. Right, Haley? Yes, you can reach us at 844-THE-BUS-1. That's 844-843-2871. And until next week, I'm Stargate Pioneer, and I will be seeing you next week. Right, ladies? Yep. Bye-bye. Later. Tater. Thank you for listening. If you want to leave us feedback, go to gunageek.com, and you'll find all of our contact information in other shows. You can also visit legendsofshield.com where you'll find our complete archive of podcasts. The music heard on this podcast is by Kevin McLeod and can be found at incompetech.com. The opinions heard on this podcast are those of the individual host and do not represent Legends, Stream, or Gunna Geek. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the property of the Disney Corporation. No infringement is intended. <laughs>